Ah, well, hello. Come along as we find out what's going on in Redwall. We're picking up today on chapter 18. And we're starting off with Clunny. Let's see what trouble he's getting himself into. Clunny massed his forces in the roadside ditch up opposite Redwall Abbey. He stood well back in the meadow behind the ditch, surrounded by his captains. Here, where he was out of range, he could direct the entire operation. But at the moment, he was not having things all his own way. For a start, he did not have many archers. Rats are notoriously bad at bow making and the fletching of arrows. From the rampants of Redwall, the field and harvest mice sent down volley after volley of tiny arrow arrows, which, while they had not great killing power, were causing much wounded, wounding and discomfort in the ranks of Clunny's horde. Standing beneath his banner, which was rammed into the earth, Clunny cracked his tail. Red tooth, dark claw, tell the sling throwers to stand ready. When I give the signal, I want to see a good heavy barrage of stones hitting at the top of that perfect. They'll make it. That'll make them keep their heads down. Frog blood. Scum nose. You two will organize the gangs with the scaling ladders and a grappling hook. See it. They all get up on top of that wall. And no blunders. The rat captains march off to the ditch to make ready. Clunny held his tail up to give the signal. On top of the wall, the mouse archers kept their up their re relentless hail of arrows into the ditch. Constant strode up and down, holding a heavy cudgel in her paws as, he, as she urged them on. That's the stuff to give them mice keep those bows twanging. Knowing the supply of arrows was not endless, the badger looked at, to the heaps of rubble and stone along the parpet edges. Brother Rufus, formal. Be ready to sh shift that lot overboard. At a moment's notice, smack, clang, bang, thud. A hail of sharp stones and pebbles whizzed onward, rattling against the monastery as Clunny waved, waved his tail in the meadow below. Taken awarenesses, several mice were fell, felled, and a mole lay stunned. Get your heads down, everyone. Lie flat, Constance shouted. The defenders instantly obeyed as sh the showers of missiles increased. Running along the rampants, bent double, the abbot cried out, Stretcher bearers, over here. Help me to get the casualties down from the closures. Winifred, the otter, lay alongside Constance and whispered to her, Hear that scraping? Clunny's lot are putting something against the wall. It's my guest. They'll try and climb up while we've got to lie low. Even as Winfred spoke, two grappling hooks with climbing ropes attached to them clang over the parpet and lodged into the joints. Stay low, my friend, whispered Constance. Give them a bit of time to get off the ground. I want plenty of rats to be high up before we make a move. Pass the word along. 
Below in the meadow, Red Tooth waved his claw and laughed wildly. Your plan is working out, Chief. Look, there's a old uh, Fangburn and his gang nearly, nearly at the top of the wall. Clenny left his visor to get a better view. It was too late to call out against what he saw happening next. A veritable avalanche of earth and rocks cascaded over the carpet. It smashed straight on to the main ladder. Rats screamed aloud and gasped in midair as they were swept from the ladder to the road below. The ladder, ladder fell sideways, cannoning into another one that were had been set up beside it. As both ladders fell, there were senses of mass chaos. Badly wounded and stalked, the survivors on the roadway tried to crawl back to the safety of the ditch, only to be buried beneath the rubble which thudded down on them. Many lay trapped beneath heavy ladders that had fallen. The air resounded with screaming, screams and moans. Clania ranted and swore. Leaving his standard, he rushed across the meadow, taking the ditch in a single leap. He darted across the road, grasping a hand, a hanging rope that he began hauling himself up, clawing over claw. As a solitary heavier gnawed through the last strands, the rope parted. Clunny fell f from a fair height and sprawled up, sprawled on the dusty road in an undignified heap. Clunny flung himself into the ditch, regrouping the slang throwers and fell a few anchors, archer, sorry. He ordered them to await his command. At the top of the wall, the last climbing rope had been severed. A hearty cheer rent the air as Red Wall defenders broke cover to survey their handiwork. Fire, Clania Ward. Stones and arrows sped upward with devastating effect. Several mice and woodland cr woodlanders cried out and fell. The results hardened Clunny. All was not lost. He began devising a new plan. In moss flower wood, Rager, who struggled with the rope that bound him to the oak tree, he could hear far-off sounds, which meant only one thing. His chief was attacking at the abbey. Straining his neck downwards at an uncomfortable angle, angle Rager was able to get his teeth into a tough climbing rope. He could manage to free himself. He might be able to sneak back and join the horde. He could uh, mingle with them and deny that he had ever been missing. Clania might also take a lenient view of his desertion if he uh, could uh, distinguished himself during the battle. The rope tasted foul. Wager could tell by its scent that it had once belonged to Shadow. He never liked that Shirley poker faced rodent. Wager congratulated himself as his teeth bit through the strand, another strand. Ha, take that rope and that. No rope can keep Rager 
prisoner for as long as he, 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 poor old Shudder. If only you could see your lovely rope now. Wigger strained up for a moment to ease his neck. The laughter died on his lips. A horrible gulp bubbling from his throat. Icy claws of terror gripped his chest. Swaying hypnotically a foot from his face was the biggest, strongest, most evil-looking otter that he had ever been born. The rat was completely petrified. The breath seemed to freeze in his lungs. The sinister blunt head moved and lays in a lazily rhythm, its forked tongue flicked endlessly in and out. The round, bead-like jet eyes never leaving his for an instant. Its voice was like a dry leaves rustling in the autumn breeze. Asmundus. Asmundus, it hissed. So kind of you to untie yourself, rat. Come with me and I'll show you eternity. Asmundus, Asmundus. It struck, it struck with light, not lightning speed. All that Wagner felt was a sudden sharp sting the side of his neck. His limbs became flaccid, his eyesight shrouded by the dark mist. By a dark mist. The last words Rager ever heard on this earth were uttered in the otter's substant hiss. Asmundus, Asmundus. Clunny scratched the floor of the ditch with his claw. It was there, the design for his next move. He would attack the abbey secretly from the moss flower side. It would be a surprise maneuver. A hand-picked squad led by him would carry out the mission. Dressed in Clunny's war helmet and armor, Red Tooth would stay back in the meadow. His disguise would be significant to fool the defenders from the distance of his high walls. The rats in the ditch were ordered to continue pressing home. The attack until Clunny and his party scaled the walls from behind and fought their way across the ground to the open the abbey gates. After issuing orders to his remaining captains, Clunny, accompanied by a scorn of assorted rats, weasels, stone, stoats, and ferrets crept off along the course of the ditch. They carried with them the long plank from St. Nina's lynch gate fence. Silently, they traveled in a northerly direction until they were out of sight of the walls. Climbing out of the ditch, they crossed the the road into moss flower wood. Clunny sat in a fallen tree trunk and told his squad what was required of them. I'll wait here with the plank carriers. The rest of you split up and search the area for any big high trees growing near the abbey walls. Make sure that the tree you pick is higher than the wall itself. And do not, and not too difficult to climb. Got that right. Get going. Clunny watched them stride off into the undergrowth. His previous good mood had deserted, uh, deserted him. He was working himself into a foul temper over the day's performance by the his mighty conqueror conquering horde. 
shown up by a simple tactic tactics of woodland creatures and mice. He snorted and uh, dug his powerful claws into the rotting tree trunk, saying, sending beetles and wood lice scurrying as he tore out a chunk of the sponge damper. Excuse me. Oh, he had them fright frightening at first. As a commander, he knew the power of fright. But once they had gained the upper hand, the initial skirmish, the mice lost their fear and became bolder. That was when the battle had started to go against him. Gained, he had scored one or two small victories, but they were nothing to bring about. He couldn't use them as an example to put fresh heart in his troops. Cluny only hoped that the mice would become overly confident and eventually make a mistake. It was the only, it was the old waiting game. Just let them make one slip up. That was all he needed. Meanwhile, he had a greater obstacle to overcome than mice. The walls. It was those same accursed, accursed walls that were ruining all his plans. Clunny tore viciously at the rotting log until great chunks of it flew through the air. If this scheme worked, he wouldn't have to worry about walls anymore. He would be inside those walls, like a fox among a day old chickens. Clunny sniffed the air. His senses told him the searchers were returning. Cheese Thief and the ferret named Kilconi came crashing out of the underbrush. They were trembling and twitching. Both looked as they had been badly scared. It was some time before Clonny could get any sense of them. Cheese Thief spoke hastily, glancing back fearfully over his shoulder. Er, er, we like, we got a bit lost, Chief. Lost where? Clonny snarled. Kilconi pointed a, a shanky, shaky claw over that way, Your Honor. And didn't we find a great strapping oak was it close to the wall cheese thief shook his head no chief it was further out into the woods look what i found wrapped around the trunk he held out the chewed and broken climbing rope cluny snatched it this is like shadow's climbing rope He's dead. What are you fools trying to tell me? Kilconia whimpered pitifully. It's uh, Ragnar, Your Honor. Clunny seized the unlucky pair and shook them soundly. Have you both gone raving mad? Do you mean to tell me you're frightened of that fool Ragnar? Cheese Thief fell to his knees, sobbing. But you didn't see him, Chief. He was just lying there. His face was all swollen, and his tongue was sticking out. It had gone purple. Ugh. He was all sorts of bloated like It was horrible. Kilconi bobbed his head vigorously in agreement. I... So it was. Didn't we see him with our very own eyes, sir? Poor, poor Kurt Wilger and his going backwards all the time. Going backwards, Cl echoed Clunny. Indeed he was, said the ferret. And uh, your man here says to me, he says, there's something pulling Wilger along. 
Sure, we couldn't see what it was for all the bushes. So we pulled them to the side, to one side between us. And what did we see? Well, what did you see? What did you see? It barked Clunny irritably. Kill Coney stopped and shattered. He spoke incredulously as if he were unable to believe himself. We saw the biggest snake you ever clapped at your clapped eyes on. The farther of all serpents. He had poor Ragger's body by the feet and was dragging it along backwards. Clunny's eyes widened. What did the serpent do when it saw you? Let go of Ragger and looked at us. Cheese thief. Squeak cheese thief. The serpent stared at us and kept saying, Asmodas, Asmodas. Clunny scratched his head and sharpened a dirty claw. Asmodas, what does... What's that supposed to mean? Do you not know? Tis the dreaded name of the devil himself, sir. Where the fair? I know because me our Orlin mother told me so. And she always said never to look a serpent in the eye. So I says to me mate here. Cheese thief, says I, don't look, run your, for your life. And that's exactly what we did, sir. Oh, you'll never know how horrible it was. I'd rather be tied in a blazing barn than go back there. So I would. The great scaly body of the quite fool, said Clunny. I think it. I hear the others coming back. Now straighten yourselves up and not a word to anyone about this serpent thing. Or you'll find my serpent across your back. Clunny's long tail waved menacingly under their noses. They took his point. The weasel called uh, scragging came running up. He reported smartly with great efficiency. High tree near the abbey wall. Chief, elm, I think, which is higher than the wall. Lots of branches jutting out. Just the job for climbing. How far to this tree, Clunny asked? About ten minutes. Ten minutes march to the east, Scragging replied. When the rest of the party arrived back, Clunny had them form in a single file, they marched eastward to the small, smart piece. The high tree did provide to be an elm, an ancient giant covered in gnarled bumps and hanging handy branches. Clunny si sized it up exactly what he wanted, the perfect distance from the wall. He turned to his commando squad. Listen, we're going to climb this tree. When we get up high enough, I'll find a strong branch that we can bridge the wall with a plank. If we go carefully, the mice won't suspect a thing. Before they can gather their wits about them, we'll be inside Redwall. And with that, we're going to stop. So until next time.